Baker Mayfield was traded to the Carolina Panthers and today we're going to get into how things can work out successfully for Baker in Carolina and what soured the relationship with the Browns in Cleveland. Welcome to the channel. If you guys are new here, consider subscribing and dropping a like on the video if you guys do enjoy it. We're about 300 subscribers away from 3,000 so if you guys are new to the channel be sure to subscribe. But let's get into the video about Baker Mayfield and his new home in Carolina. Since really around the draft, there have been rumors about Baker going to the Panthers. And at a point leading up to the draft, I really thought that there was a chance that he was going to be a Panther on draft night or a little bit before it, but nothing really amounted to anything. It seemed like the Panthers really wanted the Browns to take off some money of the salary because Baker is playing on his fifth year option. He was owed 19 million guaranteed. And the Panthers already have a fifth year option with Sam Darnold. They did not want to play two quarterbacks, 19 million a piece. So the Panthers wanted the Browns to pay a big chunk of his salary and the Browns weren't really interested in doing that at the time. But a few days ago, the Cleveland Browns traded Baker Mayfield to the Panthers for a 2024 conditional draft pick. And not many people know what a conditional draft pick is, but essentially it has to do with Baker Mayfield in his time playing for the Panthers. If he plays a certain amount of games, I want to say it was about eight. Then the fifth round pick will actually turn into a fourth round pick, which is still not a great haul for Baker Mayfield, but they can get a little bit increase on the draft pick if Baker does start for the Panthers the majority of the season next year. And as I mentioned earlier, the Panthers are not paying the full salary for Baker Mayfield. They're actually only playing 4.85 million of his salary, while the Browns will pay 10.5 million. And Mayfield converted the last three or four million into incentive base, so it would not count against the cap. Now, why would the Browns trade away their former first overall pick back in 2018? Well, it's pretty simple. They had an opportunity to get a bona fide top five, top 10 quarterback in the NFL, Deshaun Watson, and they traded for him earlier this offseason, giving up three first round picks in 2022, 2023, and 2024, as well as a third round pick in 2023 and a fourth round pick in the 2024 draft. Now, the Texans got an absolute haul for Watson as expected. He's one of the most promising young quarterbacks in the league, but the complete other side of this trade is the legal issues that Watson is facing. He has multiple assault charges from about 22 plus women. And there were talks that Watson may not be able to play this season or maybe ever. So this trade definitely had some risks for the Browns, but they were willing to risk it for a great player when he's on the field. Watson had a hearing last week and Judge Sue L. Robinson is expected to rule on any discipline after the NFL and NFL Players Association submit post-hearing briefs. So I'm sure within the next week or two, we will hear how long Deshaun Watson's suspension is and it's alleged that there were some positives that came from this if you are in Deshaun Watson's camp there seemed to be some optimism that he was not going to be suspended for the whole season and it's likely going to be a 12 or 8 game suspension and some people have floated out that that's why the Browns were so confident in getting rid of Baker because at a point in time people were like maybe Baker will stay with the Browns this year play this entire year out while Deshaun Watson is suspended and then after this year get into free agency and hopefully have a good season this year so then his market will be pretty strong heading into 2023 offseason but maybe with the news that the Browns heard about the case they were confident that Watson will be back at some point next season and they decided that Baker was not going to be the route that they were going to take in 2022. Now why did the relationship between Baker and the Browns sour? It's kind of a complex thing because just about a year ago when Baker won the first playoff game for the Browns in over 20 years there was not really a single bad thing that could be said about Baker. He was viewed as the franchise guy moving forward and then last season happened and everything just completely switched and I think that perfectly describes Baker's career and if you look at his numbers that's pretty much the case. At the time in 2018 as a rookie Baker set the touchdown record with 27 touchdowns putting up 3,700 yards completing 64% of his passes for only 14 interceptions and he really impressed people. Usually when you transition from the college to the NFL there's was a little bit of a learning curve but Baker was fairly successful and as he headed into the 2019 offseason with a new coaching staff on the horizon many believe Baker was going to take another step but that is when he had a bad season for the Browns with a lot of turmoil. He only completed 59% of his passes for 3,800 yards, 22 touchdowns to 21 interceptions. The Browns fired their entire coaching staff and then in 2020 they brought in Kevin Stefanski, changed to a more running and play action type of scheme and Baker flourished. 63% of his passes completed for 3,500 yards, 
26 touchdowns, eight interceptions. And we already mentioned him winning the playoff game for the Browns for the first time in over 20 years. And there was a lot of hope in Cleveland that Baker was finally going to be the quarterback for the team long term. But in week two of the Browns season, Baker threw an interception. He was going to tackle a defender and he actually screwed up his shoulder pretty bad. He tore his labrum and also I think fractured some bones in his shoulder. And in kind of a contract year, Baker did not want to get surgery, missed the entirety of the season and then risked missing out on a contract. So he risked it. He played and he didn't have a very good season. He completed 60% of his passes for 3,000 yards, 17 touchdowns to 13 interceptions. And he was just very inconsistent. He missed a lot of easy throws and you could tell that the shoulder was bothering him, but it was really Baker's decision to keep playing and it really backfired on him as we got to the end of the season. There were also some other issues in the locker room between Mayfield and Stefanski that really hurt their relationship. Jason Lloyd of The Athletic had a pretty strong piece about Mayfield and Stefanski's relationship. And he described an instance when Stefanski missed a meeting so he could meet with Miles Garrett privately. Mayfield had a problem with that, which led to a glaring spotlight to be shown on the quarterback during film sessions from that day forward. He went on to state in his article that Mayfield was widely viewed as childish and immature. His behavior annoyed teammates and divided the locker room, it was often difficult to coach. Now, I really don't know how much stock to actually put into that because usually when players are traded or cut from a team or a coach is fired, it's kind of a smear campaign for them as they head on to another team. All the blame is placed on that one individual and nobody else takes accountability for anything that happened. And we've heard these things about Baker all the way dating back to Oklahoma. He's always kind of had that immature label. But when the Browns were winning, when the Browns were doing good, we didn't hear any peeps of immaturity. We heard how good of a teammate Baker was, how good of a presence he was in the locker room. I don't really want to hear this narrative now that Baker was so bad last year and how he was completely different than their playoff win. But now after kind of getting into the Browns and Baker Mayfield's relationship and how it kind of soured in his time there, I want to get into the Carolina Panthers and what he can do there to be a franchise quarterback. Unfortunately, the Panthers are a little bit of a mess of an organization as well. They got a new owner, David Tepper, a few years back, and he's been trying to get things correct since he's taken over. His first hire was Matt Rule. He brought him in and Rule is really on the hot seat this year. The Panthers have been one of the worst teams in the league since he's taken over for them three years ago. And this is really his year to shine. He has not gotten the quarterback position right. They went out and spent a lot of money on Teddy Bridgewater, who did not work out well. They went out and they traded for Sam Darnold last year, who did not work out well. And this is really his strike three. If he cannot get Baker Mayfield to play good and get the Panthers to compete for a playoff spot this year, I think he will be on his way out along with the GM. But as far as the talent standpoint, I think the Panthers have a lot of good young talent. On the offensive side of the ball, they have DJ Moore, who I believe is one of the most underrated wide receivers in the entire league. I mean, if you look at his quarterback situation, he had Teddy Bridgewater, he's had Cam Newton, he's had Sam Darnold, he's had Kyle Allen. He hasn't had the greatest quarterbacks and he's still put up three 1,000 yard seasons in a row. And I think with Baker, DJ Moore is going to have a career year this year. You also can't forget about Christian McCaffrey, who two years ago was the most dynamic and best running back in the NFL. Since then, he's only played in 10 combined games the last two years, which is definitely a problem. He suffered an ankle injury towards the middle of the year last year and missed the rest of the season. But when he's in the game and playing, he's a dynamic weapon out of the backfield and running the ball. And I really hope he can stay healthy. He's one of the most exciting players to watch in the league. And I think if Baker Mayfield has CMC, DJ Moore on the outside, I think those are two really good weapons and he'll definitely have enough support to put up some good numbers. Panthers wide receiver two is Robbie Anderson. And I think he's a solid player. I'm not a huge fan of Robbie Anderson. I don't think he's anything special, but I think he can be a viable option for Baker. And then they also have a second year player, Terrence Marshall out of LSU. Maybe he can take another step in development and he'll be another good option for Baker down the line. But a big issue for the Panthers last season was their offensive line and they went out and really fixed that unit. Their first round pick was Akim Ukwanu, who actually had as the best tackle in the draft. They got him at the number six pick. I think he's going to be an instant stud and he's going to fit really nicely on the other side of Moten. Then the Browns also went out and got Austin Corbett. He was drafted in the same class as Baker. I think he's a pretty solid guard. So I do think their offensive line is going to be better. It's definitely going to be improved from last year, which was ranked number 31 by Pro Football Focus. And if they can stay healthy, I think they can be a pretty decent unit. And really the last piece of the puzzle to me is Ben McAdoo, the Panthers offensive coordinator. He has a good amount of coaching experience in the NFL. He's been a head coach for the New York Giants. He did have some funny comments about Baker back in 2018. He said he's got an edge to him. I like that. He's going to lead. They're going to follow him. I didn't see a lot of pro style football in his college tape. And if you're short, you have to be able to make up for it in some way, somehow. And personality doesn't do that. I didn't think he was a great athlete. This guy's kind of like a pocket quarterback that is short and with small hands. That's what I worry about.
But it's going to be really interesting to watch Baker Mayfield this year. And I think this is really his last huge chance to be a starting quarterback in the NFL. And he's really got to take advantage of it. Or the Panthers may look to draft a new quarterback next year or roll with another pick they had this year, Matt Corral out of Ole Miss. But I do believe the Panthers have the pieces in place for Baker to take advantage of this and be the Panthers franchise quarterback. We'll just have to see how it all plays out. And it'll definitely be a fun storyline to watch throughout the year. But thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you guys are new, be sure to subscribe and drop a like on the video if you guys do enjoy it let me know what you guys think of baker mayfield and if he's going to be the franchise quarterback for the panthers or if you think he's going to be kind of a one-year rental and not really work out there but thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one